The thing about Goldilocks, she was extremely spoiled. Her parents pampered her like a Palm Beach poodle. They worked real hard to give her everything she wanted, but Goldilocks just never seemed satisfied. She was as headstrong as a moss back mule. At breakfast one morning, her father gave her a toy rabbit that was as cute as a bug on a sow's ear. But Goldilocks just folded her arms and turned away. Bunnies are dumb. I don't want one, she huffed. And I don't want breakfast. I want another teddy bear. There were dozens of teddy bears in her toy chest, but her parents rushed off to get her a new one. While they were gone, Goldilocks snuck out of the house, dashed into the woods to hide. One of her favorite tricks. Meanwhile, just a hoot and a holler away, three bears were in their cottage contentedly cooking breakfast. It was a really big papa bear, and sort of a big mama bear, and a baby bear who wasn't big at all. Breakfast was a pot of porridge as thick as fresh churned butter. Now this porridge was hot enough to scald a skunk, so the three bears decided to take a walk and let it cool. Goldilocks, starting to feel hungry without breakfast, smelled the bear's porridge and she was off like a jackrabbit in coyote country. <laughs> Through the bear's windows she spied the three steaming bowls of porridge. Now Goldilocks never knew the meaning of polite, so without even knocking, she walked right in and straight up to the bear's breakfast table. First off, she grabbed a great spoonful of the porridge in the really big bowl. Yeah! She gasped, fanning her mouth. Any fool would know this is too hot to eat. So she picked up the middle spoon and tried the cooler porridge in the bowl that was soda big. Blah! She grimaced. Don't they have a spice rack? Then... She took a taste from the bowl that wasn't big at all. Why, this is just right. It was so good, in fact, that she left that bowl as empty as a pauper's pocket. Goldilocks, on the other hand, was full as a tick and needed a place to sit down. She spotted three chairs by the fireplace and climbed up onto the really big chair. Ash! She yelled, rubbing her backside. Haven't they heard of down cushions? She slid off the first chair and tried the middle one, which was sort of big, but not really that big. She sank into the cushion like a rock in a rain barrel. Ugh! She hollered from inside the cushion. Who 
is their decorator. At last, she tried the chair that wasn't big at all. Why, this is just right. She smiled, leaning back in the little chair. Now, Goldilocks was way too big for that chair. Leaning back in it was like walloping a walnut with a sledgehammer. The chair splintered into a hundred little pieces. Oh, my, she protested. Someone should put that chair back together. There's never a handyman around when you need one. After all this exertion, Goldilocks felt downright drowsy. She had always told her mother that she didn't need a nap, but just now, Goldilocks would not protest a rest. So, she climbed the stairs, found the bear's bedroom, and pulled herself up onto the first bed, which was really big. Too high, worried Goldilocks, peering over the edge. And the sheets don't even match. She let herself down, pulling the pillow with her and walked to the middle bed, which was sort of big, but not as tall as the first. She tried that one. No way, she complained. This is like lying on jello. Then she tried the third bed, which wasn't big at all. Goldilocks pronounced the little bear's bed just right. It was so comfortable, in fact, that in no time at all, she slipped sleepily into slumberland. three bears came back from their walk. The papa bear promptly saw the spoon in his really big bowl of porridge. Someone's been eating my porridge, he scowled. Just then the mama bear noticed that her spoon was in the bowl that was soda big. My goodness, she fretted, someone's been eating my porridge too. They both turned to see the baby bear staring teary-eyed at his bowl which wasn't big at all, but was completely empty. Someone's been eating my porridge, and there's none left for me. The Papa Bear was puzzled. He needed to think. He went to sit down in his really big chair, but he noticed that his favorite cushion had been moved. Someone's been sitting in my chair, he grumbled. The mama bear turned and saw that the cushion on her chair, which was sort of big, but not really that big, was nearly folding in half. Someone's been sitting in my chair, too, she growled. They turned to see the baby bear crying over a pile of wood chips. Someone's been sitting in my chair, and it's all smashed to pieces. <laughs> By now, the Papa Bear began to sniff around for the intruder. Cautiously, he climbed the stairs to the bedroom. There, he spied his pillow on the floor next to the really big bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, he growled. The Mama Bear was mighty concerned when she saw the quilt all crumpled up on her bed, which was sort of big but not as tall as Papa Bear's bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, too, she moaned. They turned to see the baby bear with his mouth agape pointing at his bed, which wasn't big at all. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, and she's still there. Sure enough, there was Goldilocks curled up on the little bed like a tuckered out terrier. The papa bear let out a low, rumbling growl that shook all three beds. Goldilocks awoke and rubbed her eyes. 
she saw the three bears glare at her and she shrieked, Bears! Now the three bears were well aware that there were bears. No one needed to tell them. But before they could question her, Goldilocks bolted from the little bear's bed and hopped out the window right into a tree. She slid down that tree so fast she left skid marks and she ran all the way home. Let me tell you, from that day on, Goldilocks stopped being stubborn, traded in her tricks, and did exactly what her parents told her. The three bears, I must mention, put a lock on their door. They never knew what a favor they had done for Goldilocks. In fact, they never saw her again. And I can't say that made them sad.